The trees are lining the hotel on all sides, which again, accumulate this wonderful energy coming up from the basin and dispersing it to the people who are staying in the hotel. The feng shui is a very personal thing. Each, each situation, each building is unique because the, the people that live or work within that building are unique as well. Fairmont Southampton is Bermuda's ultimate getaway. It really gives you an excellent experience of the island. It's a very, very special resort. Welcome to Feng Shui Life. I'm Phil Guerrero. Location, location, location. Geography is a very important aspect of Feng Shui. Appropriately placed mountains and waterways affect the outcome of luck. We travel to Bermuda with an expert in search of the perfect Feng Shui landform. Bermuda has many resorts to choose from, but from a feng shui standpoint, the Fairmount Southampton is one of the best I have ever seen. As you can see here, we have the hotel that is up top with this graduating expanse of grass leading into this perfect spot, what we would call a chi basin, which is just gathering energy and dispersing it throughout the area. The trees are lining the hotel on all sides, which again, accumulate this wonderful energy coming up from the basin and dispersing it to the people who are staying in the hotel. From a feng shui standpoint, one of the main things that we look for on the exterior of a house or in this case hotel is that there's a meandering road that can bring the energy or chi towards the site. As you can see from the example behind me, this is the perfect road for such a thing. The cars and the scooters, which are common on this island, bring the energy and travel it upwards and along the hill to the hotel. And you see, once you come in, the energy is dispersed by the wooden wall and is attracted on either side by the large, beautiful flowers that you see to the right and left of the main lobby. In the Jasmine Lounge, the energy is once again evenly distributed throughout the entire uh, bar and eating area. There are no dead energy corners, what we call stagnant corners. The corners where there could possibly be any dead energy are filled up with plants, that you have a nice fireplace, which adds another element to the whole uh, surface. Each end has some kind of element to either attract energy or detract the energy, which is very good for an eating environment. The bar itself is rounded and once again, it doesn't travel too quickly because the entire backdrop of the bar is not lit with mirrors. So the energy is not reflected forward, but in, to the opposite, it is drawn inward. So people will gather there in the evening. This restaurant called Windows on the Sun is another perfect example of how the energy flows conducively and with the rounded spaces that you see behind me and to my right and left, you will also note that there are no stagnant energy spaces. All corners are occupied by plants, flowers and trees, okay, conducive and related to the island. Uh, another good example of how energy can flow smoothly throughout a building is by using the tiered effect, as you'll note here. You've got three tiers 
all which are um, slowed down with large chandeliers made out of crystal, again, light reflecting, that transmit the energy throughout the place. There is no possibility here for any energy to stagnate. So once again, in the Jasmine Lounge, you have a tiered effect, which is very good for the energy. You've got the upper level and you've got a little gathering level that extends to the outside where the energy can accumulate and be dispersed. The Mid-Ocean Amphitheater is a wonderful example of how energy can be slowed down but yet kept yang at the same time in order to keep people awake. And right away when you walk in, uh, it's a grand entrance, but you have this huge pot of flowers. Now right away, that's going to assimilate the energy and soften it up. Then behind that, you have the space for the corridors, which lead into the actual room, and you have a wall. Now what this wall does is it takes the energy that is coming in from the big doors, and it's separating it. So you have like a three motion uh, lead into the room. You walk in, the energy comes in, first it hits the flowers and gets softened and then the corridors direct the energy into the actual room. Once you're in the actual room, you'll notice that it is circular, it's a semicircle around a stage. There are no corners, the, actually there's only two little corners and those corners are both taken up with large plants. The lighting is spectacular. Normally you'd have those awful fluorescent lights, which I can't stand. And uh, again, in this room you've got crystal lighting, but you also have halogen lighting, which is softer for you. And if you're spending six to eight hours in a meeting room, your eyes are gonna be a lot better off for it. The feng shui of this hotel is already quite good, but over the coming year, they're gonna be making even further changes to make it that much better. In fact, it's gonna be so much better, I'm planning on getting married here myself next year. We'll bring you more from this beautiful Bermuda Resort a little later on in the show, but right now it's time for our FSL question. And the question is, which of the following are Qi-based philosophies? Reiki, Qigong, Chinese checkers, or acupuncture? We also have answers to our frequently asked questions on our website at www.fengshuilife.tv. You can get rich with feng shui, but once again, it requires effort from the person. This is not magic. We can only provide you with an edge to getting rich. You actually have to do the work. Welcome back. Feng Shui is universal, and if you're a fan of our show, you know we love to feature practitioners from across the globe. Our next story is an FSL one-on-one -on -one with a South African consultant. Feng Shui can work for everyone, it depends who does the Feng Shui and what methods are used. Feng Shui is a very personal thing. Each, each situation, each building is unique because the, the people that live or work within that building are unique as well. And so the energy for the building combined with the unique energy of the people gives a very unique uh, uh, answer. And solving that is, is, yeah, each one is different. My aim is to be a master. Uh, I don't do things in half measures, uh, hence the fact that I spend hours studying every day. And yes, I do intend to be a master. I work very hard and hopefully pretty soon I'll be a master. 
I think with a lot of hard work and dedication, and if it's your affinity to, to be so, then yes. My first advice to people is know what you're actually looking for. Is there something wrong? Because you only need to look for a feng shui practitioner if there's something wrong within your life or within your home. Don't fix something that is working, that is broken. Don't fall into, into the trap of um, conforming to trends and fads. Uh, there are a lot of people out there who, who, who do fad feng shui or pop feng shui. So be, be careful, check their lineage. Ask who they've studied with, you're entitled to. If, if you go to a doctor or a dentist, you want to know that he's qualified. You're not just going to go to some quack on the corner to fill your teeth or do your surgery. You have the same right with a practitioner. Feng Shui doesn't just deal with landform aspects, it also deals with time aspects. So that is a very difficult question to ask. Depends on what time you ask me that question. If you look on a simple level, in the year 2000, the five annual energy, which is an energy that feng shui practitioners look for in terms of disasters, catastrophes, illnesses, just general bad things, was in the south. And coming from South Africa, we look at that in a, in a pretty global perspective. And in South Africa, we had a lot of violence relating to metal objects. There were a lot of catastrophes that happened. So yeah, that year might have been a bad year. It doesn't mean to say that we're a bad country. I tend to think we're a great country, the best country in the world. But um, next year might not be good. The year after might be great. It's very much linked to time. Feng Shui is so global. It, it, it's, it's difficult to isolate it down to a single, simple answer because there are so many considerations that need to be taken into account. Feng Shui is quite popular in South Africa. It's certainly grown in demand and popularity over the last uh, probably four, five years. Uh, more so since Master Yap has been to South Africa. Prior to that, it was very much your dinner table conversation, fad item. So yeah, I think over the next few years, we'll see a, a burgeoning interest in Feng Shui as well. Personally, I believe you can help to save it with Feng Shui. A degree of responsibility and effort needs to come from the person and feng shui is only one aspect that can help with it. It's not a miracle cure for saving love lives and it's not a miracle cure for creating love lives. You can get rich with feng shui, but once again, it requires effort from the person. This is not magic. We can only provide you with an edge to getting rich. You actually have to do the work. Qi is Anything and everything, it is all encompassing. It can be a state of mind, it can be tangible, it can be intangible, it can be anything from the smallest atom or germ to the entire universe. Chi is not limited to anything, it's not even limited to the boundaries of time. We cannot set you up for life if we do your feng shui now. We can only do it for specific periods of time. Uh, it's ideal that you look at that uh, on, a, an, on an ongoing basis so that you can keep on top of how the time cycles change. And I would say that they probably f have a lot of common principles. I'm not um, an aficionado on, on Zen in any stretch of the, by any stretch of the imagination, but the principle of harmony and balance is one that is, is quite common across all the Asian and Eastern philosophies. So, yeah, on deeper inspection, I suppose there would be quite a few similarities. If you'd like to see some of our past episodes featuring international practitioners, you can check out our website at fengshuilife.tv. Once again, the FSL question, which one of the following are Qi-based philosophies? Reiki, Qigong, Chinese checkers, or acupuncture? Karen will have the answer for you at the end of the show. Fairmont Southampton is the location of one of the new Willow Stream spas. We're very proud of it. It's, it's actually 23,000 square feet with 15 treatment rooms in total, five of which have uh, water services and 10 of which are dry treatments. 
Welcome back. And as promised, we take you back to Bermuda to complete our tour of the very impressive Fairmount Southampton Princess. The resort itself actually first opened in 1972, so we've been here uh, 30 odd years now. Fairmont Southampton actually offers a wide variety of activities and uh, fun things to do. One of our principal features is our 18-hole golf course, which is an executive par three. It's very challenging. It's got some excellent placements of water hazards and uh, sand traps. Longest hole is actually 208 yards, so it really does tighten up your short game, and uh, a lot of scratch golfers have a good time out there on our course. We're also located on the South Shore with an absolutely beautiful private beach, which has its own scuba diving school and uh, kayak rentals. Fairmont Southampton is the location of one of the new Willow Stream spas. We're very proud of it. It's, it's actually 23,000 square feet with 15 treatment rooms in total, five of which have uh, water services and 10 of which are dry treatments. It has an outstanding fitness center with 17 workstations with the latest uh, flat screen TVs for each person to review their own shows and, and uh, put their headphones on while they're exercising. And of course, it has an excellent beauty salon with five hair treatment stations and uh, pedicures and manicures, all world class. The Willow Stream Spa actually has a brand new indoor pool attached to it, which is part of the services offered. And there it has uh, excellent waterfalls and two big outdoor jacuzzis, one of which overlooks the glorious South Shore. The clients that the uh, Fairmont Southampton attracts are, it's a wide variety. We, did, we have a nice mix of vacation, family travel business, along with uh, corporate meetings and incentive groups. And uh, it's a very, very complete resort that allows each and every type of guest to have a good time. We've got a great family uh, kids explorers camp program in our lower lobby and uh, along with various other activities the families can have a great time as well as the honeymooners and uh, anniversary special holidays it's, it's a great place to be the Fairmont Southampton has a nice wide variety of dining options so you can never uh, get hungry from uh, breakfast restaurants and wickets and uh, windows by the by the sound and then of course gourmet dining with uh, jacket and tie in the Newport room family style at Wicked's. If you need to get around the island, the uh, Fairmont Southampton offers a couple of varieties of transportation. One of the most popular is our moped cycle rental shop, where you have auxiliary bikes, 50 cc's. You can get out and explore on your own. And then, of course, we have excellent government bus service as well, covering both the South Shore and the Middle Road side. And in conjunction with our trolleys and our own ferry boat ride that takes our guests across to the Fairmont Hamilton Princess, which is located on the outskirts of the city of Hamilton. Another feature of the uh, Fairmont Southampton Beach Club is our tennis courts. We do have six courts down there with uh, three of them that have lights for nighttime play after sunset. 
Since we're located at Bermuda's highest point, we've actually got some beautiful vistas of the island. One of the best is from uh, Turtle Hill, where you take a pathway up through what we call Honeymoon Walk, through a nature trail. And uh, up at the top of the hill, you can actually view the migrating whales as they go by, which is very spectacular. Fairmont Southampton actually has an excellent concierge floor as well, called the Fairmont Gold, situated on the top floor with the best views of the island. There's a lovely lounge up there where we provide complimentary breakfast and tea and then hot and cold hors d'oeuvres in the evening. And the staff there are to pamper you. It's, it's a basic small hotel within a large luxury resort. Fairmont Southampton is also very popular with our local residents. We have an excellent uh, Sunday brunch that we do here, and of course uh, the ballroom is absolutely spectacular for local weddings and special uh, charity functions, etc. So it really is an all-round resort for everybody. Fairmont Southampton is Bermuda's ultimate getaway. Whether you're here on business, attending a convention or incentive, or if you're with your family or on honeymoon, it really uh, gives you an excellent experience of the island and uh, you get to feel the warmth and the fun of the water. It's a very, very special resort. <laughs>